Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shog Mohammed. His Royal Highness the Deputy King and Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity and Youth Affairs. President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Royal Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Rafa Palace. The meeting followed the conclusion of the 2017 IMMAF World Championships of Amateur MMA, which was hosted at the Khalifa Sports City last week. The Bahrain team came second overall, winning two gold and three bronze medals at the championships during the meeting. His Highness Sheikh Nasser introduced the Bahraini winners of the 2017 IMMAF World Championships and the 2017 IFBB World Junior and Master Championships. The 2017 IMMAF World Championships saw a broad range of competition and attracted over 254 athletes from 51 different countries. The Deputy King hailed the achievements of the winners and highlighted that it is a unique opportunity to share with the world Bahrain's significant achievements in sports and youth development. The Deputy King also highlighted that Bahrain continues to build on its rich trading history to attract world-class events across various sectors. The Deputy King went on to recognize the important role the sports sector plays in youth development, adding that the sector is increasing Bahrain's international standing. The Deputy King extended his congratulations to the winners while emphasizing the role of His Highness Sheikh Nasser and the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the West Asian Athletics Association and the President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in forming partnerships with international sports organizations. The Deputy the King concluded by highlighting Bahrain's commitment to the improvement of sports facilities, noting that the country's strategic location and openness makes it a fitting platform for prestigious sporting events. His Highness Sheikh Nasser highlighted the Deputy King's unwavering support to youth and sports development. His Highness went on to recognize the instrumental role of His Highness Sheikh Khalid in the organization of the 2017 IMMAF World Championships and noted the impressive performance of the Bahrain Weightlifting Federation in the 2017 IFBB World Junior and Master Championships. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman Al bin Hamad Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Deputy King and Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today the United States Secretary of the Navy, Richard Spencer, and accompanying delegation at Rafa Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted the continued development of relations between the U.S. and Bahrain across various fields, particularly in defense cooperation and coordination. In this regard, His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of further strengthening cooperation to serve common aspirations. The meeting also presented an opportunity to discuss issues of shared interest, including recent regional and international developments, efforts to safeguard international navigation, and combating terrorism and extremism. His Royal Highness noted the, the role of the U.S. alongside its allies in further strengthening regional security and stability. For his part, the U.S. Secretary of the Navy praised Bahrain's efforts to safeguard security and stability in the region, noting that Bahrain has taken command of the combined task force CTF-151. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Chief of Staff of the Bahrain Defense Force, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Deputy King and Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held today his weekly majlis at Rafa Palace. Members of the royal family, senior government officials, members of the Shura Council and the Council of Representatives, members of the municipal councils, religious and community leaders, journalists and diplomats attended the majlis. His Royal Highness welcomed the broad range of visitors at the weekly majlis, which demonstrates Bahrain's commitment to deep-rooted traditions and values that are underpinned by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's aspirations to maintain a strong bond amongst Bahrain society. The visitors extended their appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness for hosting the Majlis and emphasized the important role the Deputy King plays in advancing sustainable development to guarantee prosperity and opportunity for the people of Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued Edict 36 of 2017 appointing directors at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Article 1 appoints Fatma Abdullah Faris al as Director of Organizations, Hassan Ibrahim Saleh Abdurrahman as Direction of, of Director of the Gulf Cooperation Council Affairs, Abdullah Ahmed Abdullah Bougahouz as Director of Financial Resources, and Abdul Aziz Mohammed Abdullah Al Eid as Director of Arab Affairs. 
the Minister of Foreign Affairs is to implement the edict, which is to become effective on the day of its issuance and is to be issued in the official gazette. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Gulaybiya Palace a number of members of the royal family as well as ministers and officials. His Royal Highness noted the development of the kingdom in hosting major events, including exhibitions and conferences, which reflects the trust of regional and international companies and the ability of the kingdom to host such events. He also underscored their positive effect on the economy of the kingdom as they attract investors. He reiterated the role of projects that target the exhibition and conference industry in making Bahrain more attractive to international companies. The Prime Minister reviewed with the audience a number of local affairs, where he affirmed that the government will continue to implement programs aimed at increasing the contribution of various sectors to the national economy. He expressed pride in the heritage of Bahrain and noted the importance of preserving it. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Gulaybiya Palace the United States Secretary of the Navy Richard Spencer and the accompanying delegation where they reviewed the course of bilateral relations between the two countries and ways to bolster them in various fields. His Royal Highness praised the vision of the United States towards the challenges facing the region and its support of its allies in combating terrorism that targets its security and stability. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that the strategic partnership between Bahrain and the U.S. has developed under the leadership of President Donald Trump, which has opened the way for more cooperation and coordination in various issues that reinforce the security and stability of the region. His Royal Highness noted the importance of the signed agreements between Bahrain and the U.S. and future agreements that aim at strengthening cooperation in military and security fields, noting the course of military cooperation between the two countries and their keenness to develop it in light of its success in various fields. His Royal Highness praised Bahraini-U.S. relations and the keenness of both countries to develop them. The U.S. Secretary of the Navy expressed his country's pride in the keenness of the Bahraini government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, to strengthen fields of cooperation between the two countries, which reflects the strength of the Bahraini-U.S. relations.
Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, patronized the ceremony of announcing the results of the fifth edition of Her Royal Highness, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women Empowerment at the SCW's headquarters. Her Royal Highness expressed satisfaction with the results the award achieved in various domains, affirming that it had established quality standards that enhanced the presence of women in public and private sector institutions. She asserted that the award had been one of the main tools of translating the vision of His Majesty the King on women through programs and practices that have become central to the work of public and private sector institutions in the kingdom. Her Royal Highness hailed the efforts of the award committee and the International Consulting Committee and their contributions to improving its results. She commended the public and private sector's keenness on the award, congratulating the winning institutions, which are the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs and Economic Development Board from the public sector and Bank of Bahrain and Kuwait, Bahrain International Airport and Bobco from the private sector. Her Royal Highness toured the accompanying the exhibition, viewing a number of outstanding practices of women empowerment applied in a number of public and private sector institutions. The Secretary General of the SCW, Halil Ansari, delivered a speech in which she stated that Her Royal Highness's directives and supervision of all the awards details contributed to its success. She noted that the award is the first of its kind in the field and the nature of its goals.
highlighting the importance and impact of the commitment of official agencies and organizations through the legislative, public and private executive authorities, civil society, to adopt policies empowering women, the fifth edition of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women Empowerment showed appreciation today to entities from the public and private sectors praising their efforts, highlighting the importance and impact of the commitment of official agencies and organizations through their legislative, public and private executive authorities, civil society, to adopt policies empowering women. The fifth edition of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women Empowerment showed appreciation today to entities from the public and private sectors praising their efforts, initiatives and projects that truly embody gender equality and have introduced innovative and groundbreaking measures to ensure women's engagement and leadership. Fortunately, we could manage uh, this year to get the surprise and uh, in the future we have uh, other uh, initiatives that we can improve and uh, do our best to uh, empower uh, women as well as uh, to the opportunity for both men and women in uh, the, at the Ministry of Health. The top three winners from the public sector are the Ministry of Health, the EDB and the Ministry of Youth and Sports. As for the private sector, the top three winners are the BBK, Bahrain Airport Company and Babco. Winners were proud to highlight the impact they have made, their strategic approach, the how, what and overall impact and sustainability. We have reached uh, quite uh, uh, a number of uh, successful indicators today. The senior management of the company is represented by 30%, 33% women. Our participation in international committees, uh, training and conferences is represented by around 70% by women working in the company. It's a great indication that the award participation rate increased to 35% in the public sector and 81% in the private sector, reflecting their increased awareness and willingness to stimulate women's intellectuality and creativity. Being given to institutions, uh, not to uh, just individual uh, uh, people, and this is very important because when you um, uh, give a prize to uh, a certain institution because it's empowering women, this means that the impact uh, of this is that it's empowering hundreds or thousands of women. From a broader perspective, the award aims to encourage communities to support families, not only women, and provide them with social, economic and political security. They have also maternity leave for men, for the father, and this is, uh, this is a new thing in the Arab region. Uh, the only maybe organization they have uh, this at the global level, the UN, they have, uh, uh, they have this for men uh, to take care of the baby with the mother. And this is a good initiative that uh, also Bahrain, they, uh, they adopt uh, initiative um, uh, similar to this, uh, and this is to empower not just women, also the family. Women's increasing percentages in the working field and attainment of leadership positions are reflecting true positive indicators for women empowerment. Reporting for Bahrain International, Amheba Abdul Ghaffour. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Olympic Committee and Honorary President of Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the local equestrian races will commence again with the hosting of the international 100 km season at Bahrain's International Endurance Village. His Highness said that the races will be a great opportunity to learn the tactics of all riders and teams. Sheikh Nasr affirmed that the royal team has made all the necessary preparations for the races, hailing the role of brief under the chairmanship of the Vice President of the Supreme Council for Environment, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, in hosting this year's races. He expressed thanks and appreciation to all the committees organizing the races. Brief will commence the season with a night race tomorrow. The races will include a 100km international race, a 40km local race and an 80km international race. For their part, the participants express thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasr for his continuous support and patronage of endurance races, hailing his local and international achievements. 
the Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, received today the United States Secretary of the Navy, Richard Spencer, and the accompanying delegation in the presence of Defense Minister Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalohma and the Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr Al Naimi. The Commander-in-Chief welcomed the U.S. Secretary of the Navy and both parties reviewed the course of bilateral relations between the two countries, ways to bolster them and the development it witnesses in various fields, especially with regard to military coordination and defense cooperation, and discussed a number of issues of common interest. The meeting was attended by the Director of the General Command's Court, Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad, Assistant Chief of Staff for Logistics and Supplies, Rear Admiral Yusuf Ahmed Malala, Assistant Chief of Staff for Human Resources, Major General Sheikh Ali bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the Director of Military Cooperation, Rear Admiral Mohammed Hashim Al Sada, and Acting Royal Na Bahrain Naval Force Commander, Commodore Mohammed Yusuf Al Asim. Also present were U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain Justin Hicks Sibral and Commander of U.S. Naval Forces Central Command Combined Maritime Forces U.S. Fifth Fleet Vice Admiral John Akinlo. The former King of Spain, King Juan Carlos I, arrived in Bahrain today and was received and welcomed by His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Bahrain International Airport. The former King of Spain's visit to Bahrain reflects the distinguished long-standing relations between the two countries. The former King was also greeted by the Mahara governor, Salman bin Hindi, and a number of officials. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Mullah, delivered a speech at the meeting of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly in Turkey. He affirmed that the Kingdom has adopted the 2030 Goals of Sustainable Development under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Al Mullah conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King to the participants and his wishes of success to the Assembly. He added that as a result of its parliamentary responsibility as a key partner in decision making, the Representatives Council has presented its vision on sustainable development in 2014 to spread awareness on citizens' basic rights. The Bahrain Journalist Association received the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Mtawa, to discuss the government action plan in the framework of the Government Forum 2017. The Minister explained the program's two stages, stating that His Majesty the King, upon His Majesty's succession to the throne, promised to implement a reform project for political, economic and social domains. He added that His Majesty promised to set a plan directing the Economic Development Board in cooperation with the government to implement it through achieving Bahrain Vision 2030. The minister noted the sources from which the government's plan is derived, which include His Majesty the King's speech to the government. The minister affirmed that journalism is the first item of the plan for its true representation of the government. He noted that the upcoming plan consists of workshops for all ministries and concerned authorities. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received today United States Secretary of the Navy, Richard Spencer. The Inspector General, Interior Minister's Undersecretary, Deputy Chief of Public Security, U.S. Ambassador and Commander of the U.S. Navy in Central Command, Commander of the Fifth Fleet, attended the meeting. The Minister welcomed the visit of the U.S. Secretary of the Navy, which comes within the framework of communication and exchange of views that aim to enhance cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States, praising the depth and strength of the strategic relations between the two friendly countries. The Minister briefed the U.S. Secretary of the Navy on the efforts exerted by the Ministry of the Interior to develop and modernize all security sectors as part of its continuous work to preserve homeland security. Both sides reviewed bilateral relations between the two friendly countries and discussed areas of cooperation and coordination, in addition to a number of issues of mutual interest. The meeting was also attended by the Coast Guard commander. 
as community partnership is the key element in combating corruption. The Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security General Directorate has adopted this principle in its awareness campaign to instill honesty and spread community awareness against corruption. Based on the principle of protection against corruption crimes, the Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security General Directorate has launched a national campaign to fight corruption by hosting an awareness exhibition and a number of events. The Bahraini society is a civil society and is not affected by the phenomenon of corruption. It does not approve of the concept of bribery by accepting gifts as deposits. The awareness campaign has encouraged the audience to take the initiative and report any corruption cases. Awareness campaigns are held in cooperation with authorities and the directorate is working on reinforcing the role of civil society to eliminate corruption. Various events and competitions were held to directly communicate with the people to spread awareness. The directorate is keen on hosting awareness campaigns annually. One of the activities of this year's national campaign is hosting an exhibition, which is an opportunity to raise awareness on corruption crimes and the nature of the directorate's work. At the same time, it gives us a chance to answer the questions of the public on the national hotline and the types of crimes. There are many activities at the exhibition targeting many categories of society, including employees of the public and private sectors, the youth and children. It allows us to meet directly with the public. Presents were given to the audience during the exhibition to help spread awareness on the importance of fighting corruption. A Syrian opposition meeting began in Riyadh today in a bid to unify the group's position ahead of peace talks backed by the United Nations to end the country's six-year civil war. Saudi Foreign Minister Adel Ejber said the only solution to the conflict was through a consensus that would achieve the demands of the Syrian people. Saudi Arabia backs the High Negotiations Committee group, whose leader, former Syrian Pre Prime Minister Riyab Hijab, resigned on Monday without explanation. UN peace talks mediator Stefan de Mistura urged the opposition figures gathered at the hotel in Riyadh that a strong unified team is a creative partner in Geneva as in what is needed. The opposition meeting is set to last until Friday, when a joint statement is expected. Six field commanders from the Houthi militias were killed in North Yemen during clashes with the Yemeni army. Houthi leader Hamoud Murshid Laham was killed along with a number of his companions during clashes with the national army by snipers. Houthi leaders Ali Abdel Samad Al Nunu and Saleh Abdallah Abu Bakr were also killed. In the northern province of Sada, air raids by the Arab coalition killed a number of field commanders of the militias. Army sources said that Arab coalition jets destroyed weapons stores north of Sada province. Lebanon Saad al Hariri suspended his decision to resign today as Prime Minister at the request of President Michel Aoun to allow for dialogue, easing a major political crisis. Hariri made his announcement after returning to Beirut last night for the first time since his November 4th shock resignation. He said all Lebanese parties must commit to keeping Lebanon out of regional conflicts, a reference to Iran backed group Hezbollah, whose regional role is a source of deep concern. He said he hoped his decision would open a new gateway for a responsible dialogue. The United States wants the Palestine Liberation Organization to keep its Washington office open as an end is in talks with Palestine officials about the issue, despite a U.S. decision that could trigger its closure. A State Department official said under U.S. law, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson would not review certification for the PLO office to operate, given certain statements made by the Palestinian leaders about the International Criminal Court under the law. The PLO cannot operate a Washington office if it urges the ICC to prosecute Israelis for crimes against Palestinians. State Department spokeswoman Heather Nart said the matter was under discussion and that as far as she knew, the office was up and running for now. According to a weekend report by the official Palestinian news agency Wafa, the Palestinian foreign minister Riyadh al-Malki said Palestinian leaders would not give in to the blackmail or pressure regarding the operation of the PLO office or negotiations on an Israeli-Palestinian peace agreement. Moving on to the business news, here is Hiba with the latest. Thank you, Shok. 
very good evening. You're watching the business news in Bahrain International with me, Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. Bahrain Oil Share Index has closed at 1,269.06 points, marking an increase of 5.42 points above the previous closing. The increase was in the commercial banks, investment, services, insurance and industrial sectors, and investors mainly traded in the investment sector, representing 72% of the total value of traded shares. 103 equity transactions took place, including 5,655,340 shares, worth 826,034 Bahraini dinars. The Bahrain Pearls and Gemstones Institute is participating in the 27th edition of the Arabian Jewels Fair to sensitize consumers and jewelers to the details of the displayed jewelry such as pearls, diamonds, sapphires and other precious stones. The participation of the Bahrain Pearls and Precious Stones Institute is part of its ongoing efforts to transform the kingdom into a globally recognized center for pearl and gemstone testing and ensuring consumer protection in sales and purchasing of pearls and gemstones stones, providing all the specialized devices in the examination of jewelry of all kinds. The Ministry of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning signed an agreement with the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority to provide consultancy services for the project of establishing a new exhibition and conference center in Sukhir area in the Southern Governorate. The project will be built on an area about 308,000 square meters next to the Bahrain International Circuit and building area of 149,000 square meters, the exhibition center will include 10 exhibition halls with a total area of 95,000 square meters. Minister of Industry, Trade and Tourism Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani said that the project is one of the leading projects to attract and develop the international exhibition industry according to the latest technology and technical specifications that meet the needs of employers and investors in the exhibition sector, which is positively in the interest of the national economy and the advancement of development.